Brian with HVAC School here. We are going to be cutting some compressors today, Ulysses Palacios style. If you've never seen Ulysses Palacios cut a compressor, not gonna claim to be in his same ballpark, but we got a Bristol here. And in this case, I don't actually know. I mean, I should know, because it should have been properly tagged, but it's not. It's been sitting around here for a while. So I don't know what's wrong with this compressor. So we're gonna cut this one open and see what we've got on this Bristol reciprocating compressor. One thing that was interesting about this compressor that I noticed right away is it's got this tag that's like melted off. So first question is, why is it melted? off but it says this compressor must have start assist ptcr for equalized pressures capacitor and relay for pressure difference i'm not exactly sure what that means but uh it does mean that it needs to have a uh, hard start kit or a start assist kit on it we've got our terminals common start and run we're going to cut it right in the center here because on this motor the actual motor part is on the top the compressor part is down in the bottom. I've got our fire extinguisher over there. We've got our cutting wheel. We've got all of our flammable gases removed from the area. Ready to cut this sucker open. So Les is gonna make some sparks. Put in my safety glasses as well. we got into it without cutting anything. Yeah, yeah. First thing you'll notice is that the suction line just goes straight down into the shell. So you have this suspension here that actually keeps the actual compressor part in full suspension. So you've got the motor up here on top. Before we go any further, let's make this thing out and let's see if it is an actual short or if it was maybe a pumping problem because I'm not really sure. The oil doesn't look bad. The oil is actually pretty clean. Put this on insulation test. We're on 500 volts, which is the right voltage to test this at since it's a 240 volt compressor. Zero mega ohms to ground. So we are dead short of the ground. Zero mega ohms. We are short of the ground on this puppy. Here we go. It's got some shavings in it but the oil's not real pungent. You can smell a little bit and this doesn't have a bunch of, well, you can actually look here. Well, yeah, you can see on the side of this compressor, there's like material, metallic material. Along the top of here, this ridge, there's a lot of like metallic material all around these windings. So you can see here, this is the motor part here that drives it and that's in the top portion. So it's not all immersed in oil and everything like on a scroll, the motor's on the bottom and the compressor's on the top. So this is the plug that was attached to the other side of the terminals. These are these leads that go in and attach to the motor windings. And then here's our suspension points here. This one has a, so this is the discharge line where it looped up around and then came up through. This is the other side. So really all these do just go in one side, it seals here, and then right out the other side with a separate plug. So this just basically makes the seal. Call that Fusite is sort of the brand name that's used. Although this technically wouldn't be Fusite because Fusite's now an Emerson product, I think. And then we have a built-in crankcase heater on this one here with leads. So that just heats up, keeps liquid refrigerant from migrating into the crankcase in the off cycle. Here's what we've got. We've got our crankshaft here. It's driven by our motor. Attaches into the, so the outside is the stator and the inside is the rotor. That's the part that turns drives this crankshaft. And uh, this has two pistons. Now I'm looking here at all these bearing surfaces looking for signs of copper plating. I'm not seeing much. I'm not seeing a lot of um, copper material. So that doesn't look too bad. So you can see inside these windings are definitely cooked on the inside of the motor. That's just what's binding it together right there, but it's not the winding itself, it's just the binding. But you can tell it's been hot. Yeah, and if you look in there, it's cooked. Cooked as they say. Why does that happen? I mean, it can happen for a lot of different reasons. If the motor were to get mechanically bound, something were to break off where the um, actual rotor inside here were to actually come in contact with the stator and damage it, that can cause it. It can be, you know, metallic material that gets into the windings themselves and shorts them out. It can be that the windings overheated over time, the compressor ran too hot. So this is actually the compressor portion. We're gonna pull this apart, see what we get inside here. We've got our thermal overload right in there. And that's what that connector is. And you see, they just got open connections in there just all immersing, immersing the refrigerant and oil. And when you look in there, you can actually see the windings are in really bad condition, right? Right in that area as well. I don't know for sure, but I think this compressor has been running hot. Yeah, you see right there too, all those windings in there just smoked. The actual uh, 
compressor portion so far looks good. We're gonna try to get this compressor apart. It may be tough. The, the uh, bolts they use on it are really abnormal type of bolts, so I'm not sure that we will be able to get it apart, but we're gonna try it. So something worth noting is that the suction gets pulled in through here, this opening, and it goes across the windings. You can, there's windings and the overload is right in here as well. It goes across these windings and cools the motor, and then it comes, goes into this sort of like suction header. There's two lines here, and then it goes into the suction side of the compressor itself. And the discharge side of the compressor is on the other side right here, it comes out here, and then goes into like this discharge muffler, and then out the discharge line. So it is, you know, it does just draw right over that motor in order to keep all this, this whole motor assembly cool. But it's not even connected. I mean, there's not like a, it's not like a seal or anything. It just sort of goes straight out of that and then just straight into this large opening here. I got this off with a Torx, which this was sitting here. So now these are eight metric. I don't think that's actually what these are, but we got it off with that. So we actually dug around in the oil and there was a lot more nasty material in there than I had initially thought. But in a lot of cases, you know, these things run hot over time. They may be getting liquid flood back and the, which washes out the oil. And then over time, it just, everything breaks down. Although I will say that looking at what I'm looking at on the crankshaft side, it doesn't look that bad. Again, I'm no compressor teardown expert, so I really shouldn't be talking too much in regards to what's acceptable and unacceptable. I can imagine, you know, the guys from Copeland or Bristol or Ulysses are going to be watching this and like, oh my gosh, this guy's an idiot. But, but you know, unless you get your hands in it, sometimes it's hard to kind of know how things work. And I figure all of you would like to see this. I'm sure there are videos like this out there, but I just haven't seen them where we really fully tear down different types of compressors. But it is helpful to understand, you know, how important it is to have proper lubrication, proper temperature. You don't want to overheat it. In general, we say you don't want to see a discharge line temperature above 220, 225 degrees, because that means that you could have a head temperature, and this is right here in the head, of over 300 degrees. And as soon as you get to over 300 degrees, you get all kinds of oil breakdown and all kind of nasty stuff. So let's see here. I think I gotta get this off. There we go. That was actually easier than I thought it would be. It almost looked like I knew what I was doing there. So that's our suction header. So that comes in here. You can see the seal's in good, in good shape there. So close and yet so far away. Man, they really have to put a bunch of different confusing stuff in here. That's actually in decent shape. The oil inside the head is actually pretty clean. The stuff that's sitting down in the bottom of the compressor has got all kinds of gross material in it, but in the compressor it's actually fairly clean. And I don't really, this isn't a, a really bad burnout because I'm not smelling significant acid in the oil. Pretty cool. So yeah, discharge gas comes out that side right there. The suction valves are these valves right here. These are the discharge valves. Which makes sense because pressure opens going that way, draws in going the other way. So it makes sense that the valves on the inside would open that direction. And the discharge valves on this side would open that direction. So this is your suction header, I guess, suction intake, and then your discharge out the other side. And there's actually a bolt, this bolt here, is coming in from inside the Compressor. And right down in there, there's another little bolt. I take these off the end here. See if I can hand turn the compressor. Oh, it turns actually pretty free. And I do hear a clunking noise up in here, stator side. So I don't know if maybe that's hitting something or if that contributed to it. But Let's see if I can turn this thing by hand. I was able to a second ago. Let's see. Oh, it turns actually pretty free. I do hear a clunking noise up in here, up in the stator side, so I don't know if maybe that's hitting something or if that contributed to it, but... This is our... We got a limb here. I believe they call this the valve plate, because I'm a real compressor teardown expert. So this is our suction valves. So these, you know, the pressure is pulling in here in opposition to the force. So here, the pressure is applied outward. Let's see if I can pry this sucker up so we can get a sense of the amount of force it takes. I might not even be able to. It's applied on these holes. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so you can see there. So that's your discharge valve. When, the, when it forces this way, it opens. And your suction valve. When it forces that way, it opens. So there's suction intake. And then when it's ready for the discharge stroke, when the piston starts to rise, then it goes that direction. 
and discharges out. So that's our valve plate. This actually, I thought this was a bolt that I had to remove, but it's actually just a, like a bypass valve. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this is what allows it to go into bypass. So it bypasses back into the shell, which then causes it to hopefully overload pretty quickly before it causes any damage. So I'm pretty, pretty confident in that. These are our pistons here, pretty groovy. See, there's oil all throughout, and the oil actually within the head on this compressor is actually pretty, pretty darn clean. Let me see if I can spin this myself. Let's see if I can spin it from the end. A little bit stuck here. So, looks like we've got pretty much just winding failure. I don't know if you can see that. Spins pretty nice. Got this little stopper here that keeps the, the piston from coming off of this direction. It's weird, it doesn't wanna, doesn't wanna move from this side. I would have expected that I could push on those pistons and actually get it to move, but it ain't working. All right, I'm gonna try to take off this end. There's our bearing. There's our little cap there, little plastic cap. So I don't, see, I don't see any copper plating anywhere, which is one of the things you look for. I knew this was a Bristol, but I didn't realize this was one of those Bristols. I guess I should have known that, but it's clearly one of the ones that when you rotate it one way, it activates both pistons. When you turn it the other way, see, it only turns the one piston. This is very interesting. So this way here, it only activates one and it turns the other way. That's not really what this video is about, but that is a, one of the Bristol compressors, multi-stage compressors. It would unload one of the pistons when it ran the opposite direction. So that apparently is what we've got right here. Because I was wondering what this, this got this kind of weird mechanism here on the end and uh, where it's catching in one direction and not in the other. That explains why it's like that. You can see it, it, it moves a little bit, but it doesn't fully pump, it completes the full full range. You can see it comes right up to the top there. That is a reciprocating compressor. So if you check this on the inside, this piston here, when it goes one direction, you can see it's pumping the other one. Oh, I got my rag stuck now. This side right here stays. This side here, when it runs, it rotates that direction, it only goes for a little ways and then it stops. Whereas when you go this way, it keeps pumping. And you can see this cam here is built right onto the shaft, but this cam on, the, on this side has this rotating piece on the inside that only catches in one direction and then doesn't catch in the other direction. So that's the direction where this is actually moving that cam. When it goes the other direction, it's basically changing the cam design. So you can see this, this ear here is built right onto the side of the shaft. So it still has a little bit of motion. All right, so that, that's it. That is a teardown of a Bristol reciprocating compressor. Got our suspension, the compressor, crankshaft, pistons, the motor, the actual intake, and then we've got our valve plate with our discharge valves here and our suction valves, all intact. So if you had one that wasn't pumping, you know, it could be that one of these valves is broken. It could be, you know, if one's locked, you could see, you know, maybe a lot of uh, bearing wear or a lot of copper plating on the inside. On this one, we really don't see much of that. We really just have a straight up winding failure. Um, so it very well could have been, you know, power quality issues, uh, issues in the start winding capacitor circuit, something with the start components, that could, that could very well have been the case. And especially in this case, it says right on there that it requires a start assist. Um, if you have a potential relay that locks in, stays locked in, that will burn up the start winding in pretty short order. Um, so that's very possibly what, uh, what occurred here. But I'm not going to actually break down the windings and actually see exactly which winding it is that started the problem. But uh, it's very likely. This has been HVAC School. I'm Brian. Thanks for watching.